Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us in lesson 11. I'm very excited uh, because we are now getting into uh, more complex applications. We are now starting with business rules. I know this is light work for you strong developers, you brilliant thinkers out there. Uh, but you know what? For those of us who uh, don't, uh, you know, breathe code, uh, this is something that's going to be very, very uh, exciting, very renewing, uh, and also it's going to elevate um, people's minds and uh, give you, uh, you know, hope to know that you can get into this type of work and uh, be successful. Uh, so business rules are just the very beginning. It's like pseudo JavaScript out of the box. And then we're going to, in our next video, we're going to get into Power Automate. Then right after that, we're going to go into JavaScript, light JavaScript. Then we're going to start moving into some of the other platforms. And from here on out, we're just going to start building advanced uh, applications at this point. Everything is going to be uh, either in pieces, but it's going to be all advanced applications to our recruitment uh, framework. Okay. So in this next video, we're going to create three business rules. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and expand our candidates table. Um, and let's go to the business rules section. Click on new business rules. And this is the editor for the business rules. I wanna show you the candidate form real quick. It's built, built out of the first name, middle name, last name. Um, and then you've got date of birth, highest education achieved years of experience with E365, Microsoft technology and coding skills. And uh, these two particular <clears throat> uh, fields, Microsoft tech skills and coding skills are multi-select option sets. So we can't even interact with them in, in business rules. Uh, one of the big limitations of business rules, you can't even touch them. So that's where JavaScript comes in, PCF controls, things like that, okay? So uh, let's, the first, first business rule is going to be one of the most simple business rules you can create. So this one's going to be called lock, unlock, full name field. Okay. And so our condition is the following. Check if full name field contains data. And so we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the full name field. And we're going to say if the full name field contains data and then apply that down here, you can see if full name contains data, then do something, right? or then do something, we click add here, and then we did add set field value. We do add set, we do add lock. So we would do add lock, and then we would do full name, and then we would lock it. And everywhere that you go, make sure, make sure you document what you do for all developers. That is the right thing to do. Always full name contains data, lock full name. Here's your entire business rule. And then also make sure that it works on the form, the scope of the form that you're working on only. So we're working with the candidate form. If there are other people in your organization that are working on other forms in the candidate table, and there's like seven different forms, one for uh, Italy, one for Germany, I mean, and they're doing different stuff with the candidates full name field. Don't lock their form and accidentally do this entity scope or all forms. Be very careful. That's what this option is for. So candidate form. Okay. In this case. So think about that. Okay. Those are the kind of advice I try to give to, to my clients and to you. Um, okay. So then here's our first business rule. Let's save it. See if it's logical. When you save it, it validates your business rule and tells you if it's in good shape. I'll click validate again. Yes, our business rule is good. I'm going to activate it. Let's build another one. So that one was about locking a field, right? Perfect. OK. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll just hit back on this. Or actually, I'll just go back over here. Okay. So I'll create a new, another business rule here. Let's call this one check consultants or no check candidates years of experience. This one's kind of fun. So once again, set the scope of your of your business rule to candidate or the candidate form right there. Okay, candidate scope. Okay. And then let's go down here and our condition is going to be, let's see. Check the years of experience value. And what we're going to do actually is what we're going to do. We're going to check. Yeah, check the years of experience value and so if the years of experience value is less than five Then we're gonna we're gonna flag. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna show a, a message here. Show error message. The candidate does not meet the minimum of five years of D365 years of experience. We'll apply that. Okay. Okay. We will validate that rule. It passes all the checks. Let's save it, let's activate it, and let's create another rule. What I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to show you the different types of rules you can create. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'm trying to show you the most frequently used ones when it comes to business rules, the most the most coveted by, by business stakeholders. Usually it's error messages. Usually it's the visibility of stuff. I'm gonna go into visibility on the next one. And usually it's locking, yeah or requiring fields too. In the next one, I'll require something and, and, and hide something for you. That way you get a, both, okay? So. We'll require the first name field and hide full name until first name and last name contain data. So we'll do two and one. Okay. Remember, always, always validate what you're doing. So here we go. pop this in here because this is basically telling us what we're doing. So if um, first name contains data apply and then add another condition and last name 
contains data. Then set visibility show full name field. Full name field visibility, yes. Otherwise, Full name field, hide full name. So we won't see field full name by default. And then right here, we need to make the, require the first name field, right? Right out of the gate. So the other thing we're gonna do is right out of the gate, we're gonna have a condition to require the first name. And that'll be a parallel condition. Because if first name and last name don't contain data, well then obviously, then they, there's something else going on. And so I'm gonna make it required. And so I'll have a condition here. So here we have it. Okay, so this condition is my else. So if first name, first name does not contain data, that's good enough for me. then it's hiding full field full name. That's beautiful. So now we have all the, and then right here, we need to do one other thing. We need to set the required value. For first name. Set first name required. And there we've done it. Oh, I missed something here. I forgot to apply this. There we go. Pass validation checks, I think now. I think. Let me save this. Now we can try all of our, and oh, and let me make sure the scope is at the candidate level and activate this. And now we can try all three of our rules. good stuff. All right. Next video is going to be Power Automate. I'm excited. And what we're going to do is we're going to fix an issue with the full name that you probably already noticed. So all three of our rules are activated. When we created this entity, we created a full name field as our base field. The problem with full name is it doesn't populate automatically. Look at this interesting error. If years of experience doesn't have a value, it's also throwing an error. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I wonder if you can save the record. So let's find out. So let's just put in John S. Snow. Now the full name field, field popped up. Let's try that again. Let's get rid of. Let's get rid of the first name. Full name is field is gone. Okay, so that, that works. That's the full name field. John, I like it. John S. Snow. Okay, full name is there. I like it. All right, and then date of birth, let's see. Fill it out. 
if I have five years of experience, that's cool. But if I have three years of experience, the candidate says must meet the minimum of five years of experience. But if it's but that's if it's blank. That's interesting. But if I can put zero, zero is still not good. Can I save the form with an error? No, I wouldn't be able to save the form with an error. So that wouldn't be a good thing, would it? Then the full name, I have to put in the full name completely like this to satisfy the form. So in this case, I would have to put in, let's see, this just accepts letters. No, it doesn't actually, it has to take a number. So in this case, to satisfy the form, I have to provide an integer value. That's very unfortunate. And then, I mean, right here, the Microsoft technologies, I can put in things like Canvas apps, custom actions, portals, Azure Logic apps, model-driven apps, SQL, SSIS, whatever. Coding skills I can put in, you know. It's a lot of fun actually going through these. JavaScript, jQuery. Okay, so interesting. So we can save this record now, but there's some deficiencies, right? Um, the business rule for uh, years of experience has a deficiency in that even if the value is blank, it triggers the um, error message. So that's not so useful. I think JavaScript could do a better job of that, right? All right. So uh, we will actually show that in another video. We'll handle that. Uh, that particular use case in a different way using JS. Okay, next video is going to show us populating the uh, full name value uh, with a Power Automate job. Looking forward to making that next video. Thank you so much for joining us as we uh, leveraged uh, business rules to show you how you can create some easy automation on your forms with a little bit of effort, just small effort. Thank you.